In the last couple of videos we've been calculating the derivative but now we're going to take an in-depth look at as to what the derivative actually is and I promise you if you can understand or remember what the derivative is it's going to make the rest of grade 12 calculus quite easy. Not easy but it, it makes it a lot more easier to understand. So in one of the videos I did mention that the derivative stands for gradient. Okay, because in grade 9, 10, and 11, we were always busy with straight lines. And so to work out the gradient, we just did y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. However, when you are busy with a curve, you can't use that formula because that formula is only for straight lines. So then mathematicians, specifically Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, they came up with calculus and calculus one of its main features is to be able to calculate the gradient of a curve and not of a straight line so let's go compute or let's go calculate what the first derivative of this function is well we know how to do that because this is a simple one to do so we just multiply the 3 into the front and that's just going to give us 3x squared then we're going to multiply this 2 into the front so that just becomes 4 x and then the 2 you minus 1 from that so that just becomes a 1 and then this x over here when you take the derivative of that you just end up with minus 1 and then the 2 falls away. Now this function that we have just found this first derivative that function describes the gradient so we could even do this don't do this in a test but it's just for understanding purposes we could say the following so let's see if that makes sense if we look at this portion of the graph we can see that in that portion of the graph, the, the graph is going downhill. Some people might say, hey, but that's also going uphill. Okay, but remember, you always have to look at it from left to right. Okay, so if you were on a roller coaster going from left to right, at that green portion over there, you would be going downhill. What that means is that the gradient is negative. Okay, let's see if that is true. So. I want you to choose an x value somewhere between this end point and this end point. So the x value at this end point is negative 0.2 and on this side it's 1.55. So let's choose oh we can even choose the we can even choose an x value of 1. So we go plug the x value of 1 into this equation and what we'll get sorry I just realized I made a little mistake here. Sorry for any of you who saw that. That's a minus. Okay, so that's a minus. So if we, and, and we did have it as a minus over there, I just wrote it down wrong in the second, when I wrote it down the second time. So if we had to go calculate this, you're going to end up with 3 minus 4 minus 1. And that's going to give us minus 2. So that minus 2 means that the gradient of the curve at that point is minus 2. So that makes sense. We did say it was negative. Now we can focus in on this portion of the graph. And if you were on a roller coaster going from left to right, that would be considered going uphill. And so that means positive gradient. So let's choose an x value somewhere in that region. So I'm going to choose an x value somewhere over here. So that would be a r about, about 3 because that over there has an x value of 2. So I'm going to plug, oh right, right, I forgot to say here gradient, sorry equals to 3x squared minus 4x minus 1. So let's plug in a value of, let's plug an x value of 3. So we plug 3 in and that's going to give us a value of 14 which tells us that the gradient at that part of the graph is 14. So it is positive and it has a value of 14. Then we could focus over here for example and that would also be considered an upwards portion or where the graph is increasing and so the gradient should be positive. Let's test it though. So we'll choose an x value anywhere in that region. So I'm just going to choose minus 1 for the x value. And what we end up there, what we're going to end up with there is is an answer of 6. Okay. So that means that the gradient in that green or no, where x is minus 1 is 6. It doesn't mean the whole part of the green is 6. It means over there it's going to be 6. Let's choose somewhere. Let's choose over here. So that x value would probably be about negative a half. So we could substitute it in and we'd get 3 times negative a half squared minus 4 times by negative a half minus 1. 
and that gives you a value of, of 1.75. So it means that the gradient over there is still positive, but it's a little less steep than what it was when x was minus 1. So what Newton and his colleagues came up with is incredibly powerful. We can, t we can work out the gradient at any given point on the graph as long as we've worked out the first derivative and as long as we know what the x value is where we are looking. So let's just do one more and then that'll be the end of this lesson. Let's have a look over here. What would you say the gradient is at that point over there where the graph turns? Well, if I had to zoom in over there, the graph would look like this. So at that point over there, it's flat. So we should expect that the gradient should be zero over there. So the way to tell is you plug in the x value, which is 1.55. You plug that into the gradient formula and let's see what we get. So there I filled in 1.55 into the gradient formula in the place of x. And of course, we're not going to get a perfect zero. We're going to get 0 0.0075. That's just due to rounding errors. This 1.55 is probably like 1.543 or 1.557 or something like that. But the idea is, is that the gradient is pretty much zero at that point. So the main thing that you need to understand from this video is that the first derivative is an expression that can describe the gradient at any given point. You just need to know what the x value is. The other way around would be, if you know what the gradient is, then you can work out where that should be on the graph. So what I mean by that is the following. If we know that the gradient can be calculated using 3x squared minus 4x minus 1, well, if I know that the gradient is equal to 5, for example, then I could make the gradient equal to 5, and then I could work backwards to work out what value of what the value of x should be so that the gradient is 5. So that would be the other way around. So I hope this video makes sense because it is one of the most important videos in this whole topic of calculus.